Um, hello class. Mm, how are we? Yeah. <coughs> now you need to be very, very attentive. Uh, make sure you have a notebook. A notebook. Same. Should also have a ruler. A ruler for drawing some lines. Yeah. Now, today, we are continuing with our uh, chemistry lessons. Um, we, we left senior one. Of course, the last topic in senior one was rocks and minerals. That correct? Yeah, that's correct. Now we are starting senior two work today. Today. And uh, senior two has uh, uh, five topics five topics so now we are going to list them down then we see how we can uh, move through now senior two topics topics senior two topics the first topic in senior two will be acids Bases Acids, bases and indicators. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody with spider and salts. Salts is the next topic. Salt. Then the third topic so, will be atomic structure and periodic table. Atomic structure and periodic, periodic, periodic table. Then the fourth topic will be um, reactivity series reactivity series and lastly shall look at carbon in the environment carbon in the environment yeah now that uh, that those are the um, are the uh, five topics that will be handled in senior two. Now, as I've told you, pay maximum attention. See, now. And, uh, and uh, we said that uh, chemistry is whatever you see that faces your face or the eyes. Now that would mean that every material that is around you is basically uh, you are seeing chemistry. Yeah, you are seeing chemistry. Now, let us right away start with the the first topic here, acids, bases, indicators, salts, atomic structure and periodic table, then reactivity theory, and carbon in the environment. So, 
Now, the first two topics are for first term. As this is this and this is first term work. First term work. Uh, the third topic ca uh, captures the entire the entire second term. Second term. Then these last four are uh, uh, third term work. Third term work. Now, let us open with acids, bases, and indicators. Let me try to remove this and we cover acids, bases, and indicators, then I will expect that uh, now as the, these topics are five but broad, then in your senior, in your senior, senior one you had uh, around nine topics. You see as we move higher the topics narrow but they become few but broad but broad now let us start with acids bases indicators we expect it to run for around one hour and 30 minutes so one hour 30 minutes now acids bases indicators that word might seem very new very very new but as we agreed in senior one that uh, every 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 substance around us is is that we are seeing chemistry see when you see a tv you're seeing chemistry because it's made by the knowledge of chemistry when you see salt at home that is basically chemistry. Now, in understanding what we mean by acids, bases, and indicators, see, we are going to broadly uh, discuss, listen, we are going to discuss the common substances that we eat at home and how they taste on our tongue yeah i will request you to try because um i want to start on this to, to know what is an acid base or an indicator now to understand this concept in in just a few minutes uh discuss uh, common substances eaten now, when we use the word substance, we refer to anything tangible. See, like food, like an apple is tangible. Discuss common substances eaten, eaten at home, at home. Now, you might, when you hear of a substance, your mind runs to the laboratory, no, no. A substance is anything tangible. Yeah. Now you discuss sub eaten at home and how they taste. How they taste. See, in terms of are they sour, bitter, or do they taste like nothing on or do they have no taste to, to be neutral? is to have no taste see have no taste in, in just like uh, let me give you because of time we are trying to save time use it three minutes very very fast uh, you you discuss in table form what you eat at home and how it tastes discuss five items only then that, that would throw us to now opening broadly what we are talking about today. So I've given you three minutes. Yeah. 
three minutes, uh, discuss over the five substances eaten at home, and how do they taste? You should be loud. Should be loud. You are through? Yeah. Now let us have uh, uh, Chiravo presenting to us. Chiravo present to us those. Uh, okay, the common substances eaten at home, when we speak of the way they taste, we have those that are sour, bitter, and those that have no taste, well known as neutral. The ones that are sour, we have lemon, milk, we have apples and onions. Then the ones that are bitter, we have red pepper and ginger. Then the ones that have no taste and are neutral, those we give examples as water. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. See, thank you very much, Rabo. Now, yeah, that's very, very great. You've told us that the substance then the taste. You've told us that uh, the first substance was lemon. lemon. That its taste is sour. sour. Then milk. milk is sour. sour. Unfortunately, I don't take milk. Therefore, taste it for me. You know it's sour. Okay, go ahead. Water. Water. Neutral. A neutral, no taste. Then? Apple. The apple? Yes. Apple is? Sour. 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 That's very good. Only that? Onion. Onion, Onion is? Sour. Sour. Red pepper. Red pepper. And, and green water green pepper these are these are bitter bitter I hope you are aware of what we mean by sour and to be bitter mm. of ready pepper P E P E double P E R thank you for that correction pepper Okay, those ones are even the same here. Yes. They are, you have said they are bitter. Now, that means uh, in looking at chemistry, it shows that every substance around us can be either an acid, a base, or a neutral sub substance. Now, that throws us today to categorizing. Now, if you are sour, what are you? If you are bitter, what are you? Okay? See? Now, let us now open what that means today. Today, it throws us into our subtopics for today here. Because we have seen that substances can be any. That means we shall pick out acids alone. Then pick out bases. Then in bases, there is some bases which are called alkalis. Some are called alkalis. Some, some bases. That means you shall see alkalis. 
Then we shall look at the indicators. Now starting with acids here, we can break it. What do we need to know about acids there? See? What do we need to know? That means we shall need to know uh, how do we define an acid? Definition of an acid and its chemical nature. See, what do we mean? That if we are saying what is an acid, then what is that the acid? Then the chemical nature is that what are those elements or chemical substances that make up an acid that make it test what it can take? Tests. See? Now, uh, these substances, as you've categorized to me, you have said we can have lemons which are sour, milk which is sour, water which is neutral, apple sour, etc. And I wanted the, I asked a question because we say these substances can be acids, bases, and neutral substances. Then we are saying that now, if indeed, if if indeed these substances are that, which one, which test would qualify the substance to be an acid and which test would qualify the substance to be a base? Yes, some people have some knowledge research here, Chirabo. Uh, the test that will qualify for acids mm. is sour. sour. Then the test that will qualify for bases is bitter. Is bitter. And then neutral is tasteless. Neutral is tasteless. Great. Okay. Now, let us continue with our sub definition of an acid and its chemical nature. See. Then we are also going to see types of acids. See. Types of acids. Then we shall also visit the strength of acids. Strength of acids. And we shall also visit what we call the basicity. Basicity of an acid. Basicity. Then we shall look at physical properties. Physical properties and chemical properties, chemical properties of an acid. Then we shall also look at uses of acids and that will close acid, acid discussion and will bring in the concept of bases now. Now let us start with the first subheading definition and chemical nature, chemical nature of any acid. Now, uh, patience, can you remind us, because to, 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 to understand this acid very well, we, we said that uh, the best way to know an acid is to just look at some of its uh, properties like test, the physical property like test. And now that will throw us into, after knowing what, if it tastes sour, what made it to be sour? See? Patience. You do remind us very well, Chirabo emphasized that acids are? Acids are sour. Are sour. Acids are? Are sour. That means, we can basically go into now, if acids are sour, what really makes the acid sour? Mm. Because if you say, if you say, this tea that I'm drinking is sweet, what is making the, the tea sweet? Is it salt? Honey or, or, or what? I think it is because they have a uh, low pH. Low pH. 
That's another concept, law, pH. That's very, 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 very deep. As in sub law, pH, okay? That's very deep now. Okay, we, we can pause that because it will come now in deep understanding under chemical properties here. Now, the people have tried, done some research, I can see. Now, we've said that acids are sour. Now, inside the acid, there is some, there is a chemical, the, there is a chemical uh, substance or species inside there that makes the acid sour. And that species there is called the, a hydrogen ion. Now, now that, that, that word hydrogen ion, the hydrogen as we saw in symbols, it's represented by H. Then that atom has a charge because we have two types of charges, either positive or negative. Then this hydrogen has a charge uh, of a, a, a positive charge. See? Now we shall see later under the periodic table how does this charge come about. But we are seeing that what makes the acid really sour is this, this chemical species. It's called, it's under a group of chemical uh, species that we call ions. Now, you listen, that means as we advance from senior one, we met atoms clear. We met molecules, then we met elements, we met compounds, now we are meeting iron. And shortly, in a few lessons, in a few chapters from now, we, we will visit what we mean by an iron. It's also a, a building block of certain substances around us. Of course, every substance is matter, meaning matter can have elements or its atom, or it can be in terms of ions, see? That ions are found in, in, in that acid are what's making it sour. Okay, now, an acid, listen, listen, in the laboratory, we have some acids, and I, I think you have done some research on them. We have some acids in our laboratory. Some of you watch some news, you find people pouring acids on others. See, that means there are some acids which are made in the industry, and we have them. Now, some acids are very dangerous that uh, you don't just buy it from the manufacturer and, and touch it, touch that liquid there. Of course, when you touch the liquid, we shall see later that acids are very, very uh, corrosive. They eat up your skin. See? They eat up your skin. Now, we normally first pour them in water to make them a bit, uh, because when we buy them, we buy them when, in, when they don't have uh, any, or they have very little water that was used to manufacture them. Now, when they have very little water there, they are very, very dangerous. Some don't have water at all. Therefore, we simply add some water to, 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 to say we are making them from the concentrated form to be dilute. And in so doing, they will become less dangerous. Now, listen. An acid can only produce these things when you have added it to water. When you added it to? water. That means when you dissolve a chemical acid in water, then what you'll put on your tongue 
Of course, some of you would be saying now, why do I taste a lemon and it tastes sour? Of course, your tongue has some water in it. See, that means without water, this acid, acid cannot release for you the, the, that, that iron that makes it sour. Clear? See? Now, upon that discussion, who can try to figure out for us a definition of an acid from the discussion that we picked? Mm. What's an acid now? Because we want to define and its chemical nature we have seen it here. What could an acid be? Eh, could you figure out what an acid is? Then we shift. Chirabo, you thought. Please go ahead, Chirabo. What's an acid, Chirabo? Okay, according to me, an acid is a substance that contains a chemical species. Okay, we we'll want speak about hydrogen ion. Yeah, and we add what I need to make it dilute. Okay, that's good. Okay, patience, what would you? Sour water. That means those are the key. It must be sour. It must be put in water. It must release hydrogen. And okay. That means we can simply say an acid is a substance which, when dissolved in water, releases hydrogen ions and tastes sour. So, is that very, very clear? Yeah. What makes it sour is that chemical species, that form of a substance called an ion. Because we say the substances can have atoms and molecules, now we can see that they can also have ions. See? Now, let us shift now. That definition and chemical nature is understood. The chemical nature, we mean what is that chemical species that makes the acid sour? Clear? Yeah. yeah. Now, types of acids here. See? Types of? Acids, yeah, and you must listen because it is so interesting that acids are, are directed around us, but we, we, we eat them. See, see, we eat them. Mm. Let us visit now. Yeah, I'm very, very careful on time now to keep it. Types of acids, types of acids. Now, listen, uh, in your discussion, you gave me uh, lemons. This uh, lemon is from plants, clear? Not so. There is a tree that gives lemons. Now, now me, I will ask you, if anything, if medicine is from a plant, what do they call those substances that are from plants? Things that are from plants are normally categorized as? Herbs. Herbs. <laughs> Sorry. Herbs. They are herbo herbos. No, so? Any, any other word? Herbs, it's okay. Have you ever heard of a company called the, um, it is called what? It is Herbo Organic. 
that that word organic now things that are from that's why you have organic manure organic means the things that are from natural pl plants or any animals now uh, you see this is very very interesting see listen now listen very attentively we are saying that uh, to be from natural organisms is to be organic now we shall see it there now that what does that word organic mean it means a uh, substances that have a certain special element called the carbon but don't worry don't worry of that now there are some uh, acids that are from both animals and pl plants see yeah listen you gave me milk is from a plant no from an animal yeah that's very very correct that means that there are some acids that are from plants and animals and those are called organic ah. see yeah types of acids we have organic acids now me i'm going to again ask another question before you give the second type where do you think that uh, if the acid is not from a plant it can come from where laboratory and where does the laboratory get the sub the chemical to make the acid remember our last topic in senior one see pages is saying from minerals that means because we have said that apart from substances being natural from plants and animals then they are from the earth is crust in terms of mine see then that throws us to number two as mineral acids see that means organic and mineral acids yeah that's correct in inorganic now the word inorganic simply refers to mineral substances inorganic acids because not to be organic is to be you know mm. all the mineral elements are called inorganic elements clear now now we are going to give some examples of acids from now a lemon is not an acid no no see a lemon is a substance having any ah that le oh there is the word there lemon juice <laughs> okay now let us have a subheading they are called organic acids which are good from natural plants and animals see and we have said a lemon is not an acid neither milk is an acid neither an apple these are fruits clear see now we are going now to pick if it's a lemon which acid is found in i'll ask you to visit google but we shall give some few examples today but uh, all the fruits around you you see we are in the situation of uh, coronavirus and uh, they are always encouraging us that uh, uh, these uh, fruits normally do us a favor that they want they they build the immune system now it's your task to know the, is the that substance which acid is in there that builds the immune system it's not the lemon it is what is inside the lemon that does the work 
See? Clear? Now, examples of organic acids. That lemon has that acid called what? Some of you have been hearing of the things from, from our primary. Now, lemon has what we call citric acid. Citric. Uh, that is the acid that heals your cough. Mm. Uh, that, that improves the respiratory uh, system. Milk. Milk has which acid in it there? Uh, that, one, that means I will send you to Google. It has what you call lactic acid. Uh, I'll send you to Google uh, where we are not sure. An apple has which acid? Uh, now, now it is general that our heads know that all of fruits have citric acids. See? <laughs> you see? Now, an apple has an acid called the malic. Malic acid. Now, your homework will be which acid is found in the onion and red pepper. Excuse me. Yes. What of one is called gastric acid? Gastric, that's stomach acid. And if that, is, that is now stomach acid. Uh, in, in ascorbic in oranges. That's great. Oh, that means oranges have ascorbic. Oh, great. Now, you are saying gastric acid is simply the, because it's found in the, in the stomach, instead of us calling it hydrochloric acid, because hydrochloric is and also mineral acids, but it's also natural in the, sto in the stomach. I have a sample of hydrochloric acid somewhere here, but it's also in our stomach. That's stomach acid, which is gastric acid. Yeah, that's right. You'll research for me what's found in onions and red, then pineapples and so on. Mangoes, which acid is that? See? Because it is naturally made. You see? But it's not, listen, it's naturally made but has the futures of mineral, therefore not suitable to be organic. But uh, listen, because we said to be organic, anything organic has a special element called the carbon. Clear? Now, this means that uh, to eliminate an acid from to be organic and inorganic, you must check does it have carbon element among the elements it has. There are many elements in citric acid like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, but you must make sure carbon is part of the elements in the acid to qualify it to be organic. Can. We shall look at later that inorganic acid like hydrochloric acid has hydrogen and chlorine. It has no carbon. Yeah. Now go to mineral acids. You list many. Yes. Fluoroantonomic acid. Found in? I don't. <laughs> Patience. I get a very correct answer, but. Now, I would want the fruit. Clear? Yeah. Hey, where, where, which fruit do we find that? Yes, which fruit contains fluoroantonomic acid? No, so that means on your Google, I'll be allowing you with phones, of course, to to, to, to put in some of those things in Google. 
Google acid sin pineapples see acid sin what in watermelon watercress see okay ah uh, uh, i see you have questions answer let us start with the uh, patience which Salut. Salufric. Salufric. Acid. Is the same answer? I was going to ask you whether also hydrochloric acid is a Ah. Okay. Now. Hmm? Mineral acids. Mineral acids. Okay. Yeah. But she's asking is what? Hydrochloric mineral? Yeah, it is. Because as long as it has no, you just take chemical elements in 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 hydrochloric acid, they will tell you hydrogen and chlorine on your Google. That means it, it, to be able to know that it's organic, it must have carbon as one of the elements mentioned clear. Ah, uh, in watermelon, I will still pause that you research. Patients get us the most correct answer. See, which acid is in watermelon? Because watermelon is actually a plant, not true. And the sulfuric acid, as we shall see, is mineral. Mm. Go to mineral acids. Acid. Yeah. It's what you mentioned? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that you were answering a question. I was answering a question. Okay. Now, mineral acids. Acids that are obtained from mineral salts. Or, or inorganic co compounds. Acids from mineral salts or inorganic compounds. Now you are saying which acid is that? Sulfuric acid. A acid. It contains hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. Sulfuric. That means it has no carbon. Contains sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now in the laboratory there are three major minerals acids, hydrochloric acid, which has hydrogen and chlorine. Yes. Then that's, this other major one is which one? The one that uh, they pour on your skin and it eats it up. The one that other people buy to pour on other people. But we are not, we are saying, we are not saying go and buy. See which acid is very very dangerous on the skin. Yeah. <laughs> you have not read it before. Nitric acid has nitrogen and Oxygen. Yeah. We have so many, like she's mentioning some fluoroantonic, antonomic, uh, carbonic acid, which has now that carbonic has carbon in it, that means it can also be got from plants. Uh, carbonic, but it's made a, a from minerals, it's a mineral acid, yes. Of course, there is no acid that is friendly to you, except if it is ogre, that you can eat it on your tongue. But all these, see, are very, very dangerous. Some burn the skin, 
Yeah, like if you just me add yourself uh, an acid. One time I sat on the acid. But I'll tell you now, when we reach bases, we shall see what did I do that the acid did not uh, become dangerous to me. See, of course, as we shall see ahead, bases are uh, act opposite to acids. That means they, they destroy the action of the acid. Mm. I sat, I, I was preparing it, it dropped on the chair, I didn't notice. I forgot about it. I noticed, but I didn't uh, clean. I think and I came and sat on it. See, and it eats the skin. See, it 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 eats. It spoiled the trouser. You see that? Now, uh, there are many. There are many here. Nitric acid, sulfurous acid here. There are very, very many. You'll add more from Google. Sulfurous acid, sulfurous. There is phosphoric. So many phosphoric acid. So many. But you'll Google. You just Google in and say, open the Google app on your phone or, or computer. Type in uh, examples of mineral acids. Then you can also find out which elements make up phosphoric acid. Remember that each acid here, when it you pour it in water, then it releases the other ion called the hydrogen ion. So every acid here. Now, let us drop to strength of acids. Strength of acids. <laughs> that, that's now where. Yeah. Now, me, I will ask you. Uh, does a tomato taste the same as a lemon? See? Does an apple taste the same as a lemon, yet both contain acids? See, they don't. One is more sour, one is less. Oh. See. That means there are some acids which are stronger than others. Clear? One will produce many hydrogen ions. One will produce few hydrogen ions. Now listen, listen very attentively. The process of producing ions by an acid is called ionization. Because you said it is producing what? An iron, and now the process is called ionization. Now, now, strength of an acid. Acids can be categorized as strong and weak acids. That means under strength, we say acids are categorized as strong acids and weak acids. Clear? Now, we say your tongue can know. Except again, you see, when you put an acid in water, sorry, when you put an acid in water, then you make it... Uh, you try to reduce its sourness also. That water makes it what we call dilute. Do you understand by the word dilute? To make it less, uh, uh, less, less concentrated or less sour than it was. But of course you can't put a mineral acid on the tongue unless you are looking for a problem. 
see. Uh, the, you see, people they pour them one acid on their face, and the whole face becomes like a monster. See, that means you never regain that face. Maybe after twenty years again. Yet girls like their faces very, very much. Maybe a man you can pour, and you ignore because the face is not so important. See. But girls like their faces. Now, a strong acid is the one that produces many hydrogen ions, see, by ionizing completely. And it tastes more sour. So, many hydrogen ions, see, by ionizing compu. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> Listen, what, what do we mean? Somebody's wondering in the head what does that now mean to ionize completely? See, to break down completely yourself and give out hydrogen ions. But there are some acids which you, part of it will break down, part will not. See? That's what we are calling complete IO, ionization and incomplete. Yeah. You see? Now, that means we can say strength of an acid, strong and weak. A strong acid is the one that completely ionizes in water to produce many hydrogen ions, it breaks down the whole of itself. See, when you pour it in water, it will separate up, break up, see. Now, a weak acid on the other hand is the acid that partially, to be partial is to be incomplete that partially ionizes to produce a few hydrogen ions in water. Okay. Now, strong ones, you, you have them, the first three mineral acids are strong acids. Then, so, all your organic acids, see, are weak. You see, these are weak acids. That very, very clear. Including, yes, patience. Is there about acids that lose only, let me see, one hydrogen? Again, and then another element. Now, ask that question again. Teacher, weak acid to partially mm. some hydrogen ions, right? Now, how about those ones that lose only one and they also lose another element? Just like the and no What is this? Thank you very much. That's a very good question. Now, patients is saying that, uh, sir, what about those acids that release only one hydrogen ion and some other element? Now, patients, we shall ask you by opening another subtopic called the basis of an acid. Now listen, that the strong acids, the first three mineral acids are the strongest uh, acids. This is battery acids found in the batteries of your cars. This is stomach acid found in your stomach. This is in our laboratory. So it, is, it is found in your... Does you have a, a suggestion? Yeah. Yes. 
search the plural antinomic, and on Google you see that it is ten quite different times more than more coincidence of few Is it true? But that information is true, of course. See, more corrosive, it it's can... It's stronger, like, 10 quadrillion times than sulfuric acid. That means if you put it on the skin in comparison to sulfuric acid, it would destroy the skin more than sulfuric acid. That's very, very correct. And they said it will eat anything in its way except for something that has come with me. That's very good research. See? See that? I want that. Okay. Weak acids, they ionize incompletely or partially to produce few hydrogen ions. And we said all organic acids, including the rest of these. Now, basis of an acid, because of time, we are trying to keep time. Basis of an acid. Basis of an acid. Now, uh, patients, you asked a question when you researched on Google. Um, you said that uh, which acid can be the one that releases one hydrogen ion? Now, whenever acids are poured in water, see, they release hydrogen ions, and that's the basic part that makes the acid sour. Now, the hydrogen ions can be released, each, each acid molecule that, that breaks down releases either one, or two, or three. That, that means whenever an acid molecule is put in water, it can either give out one, hydrogen and some give two some give three see now that's what we call the basis of the acid is the number of hydrogen ions every mo one molecule of an acid can release in water see that's that's true basis is the number of hydrogen ions that one molecule of an acid releases in water Therefore, basistes are divided into three. That means monobasic acid releases one hydrogen ion. Dibasic acid releases two hydrogen ions. That's why now, monobasic acid, we have that stomach acid called the hydrochloric acid. Uh, that's why, who can help? What is a tribasic acid? That's that three, three, three hydrogen ions. Monobasic, you Google, we have said one is hydrochloric acid, then dibasic is sulfuric acid then assignment will be left it for you on a tri on a f on on adding one one example of each but a tribasic acid we have phosphoric acid then you will also categorize for us the the uh, the f the fluoro what antonomic acid mm. Where does it fall? Now, right away, running to physical properties of the acids because of time. Now, to be physical is to be, be tested by physical senses. When we say physical property, we refer to the properties that you can detect using uh, the, the sight, eyes, a uh, feel, using hands, see, also you can test using the tongue, but don't test acids anyhow in the lab, we've said laboratory acids, most of them, we keep their mineral acids, and mineral acids are very, very dangerous, 
So some are used to make explosives. Yeah, as we shall give under the usage of acids here. Mm. Now, physical properties, what are some of those that for you can recognize? Yes, physical properties of acids now. Physical properties of acids. Yes, patience. Acids are sour. They have that sour taste. A reason you know. Mm. Yes, then. Uh, yes, kirabo. Acids are made up of the hydrogen ion. Okay, is it a chemical property? What do you think? Is it chemical? It's chemical. Uh, because it's speaking the chemical part of the, the acid, yes? Acids have order. Have order. Sure? Mm -hmm. I very, very sure an acid smells. Like lemon juice. Lemon juice, juice yeah? That hydrogen ion. Iron. It is the citric acid smelling. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Even Chirava is emphasizing they have order. Now let us be simple like this. Now, uh, listen, uh, you see, the substances that we see around us, if they are not in their pure form, like in plants, if you extracted the lemon, see, a lemon has other things around it. An apple. The sweet smell of an apple, see, is really, you have said, the chemical part of it is that acid that smells, we shall not deny that. But then we shall not give it as a general point because if I give you my hydrochloric acid here, it will not smell. It won't. You can try to smell hydrochloric acid. Yeah. Try to smell hydrochloric acid here. Does hydrochloric acid smell? She's saying it smells. Are you claiming it smells? But there, there is some kind of fumes coming up. Okay. Now, <laughs> listen. Now, we shall not ground it that it smells, no. More research for you. But as for now, we are standing on the point Organic acid serves smells. Even organic acid is smelling, but it's fuming. There is some fume that is acidic coming up because it's, it's a bit uh, concentrated. But uh, some acids don't smell. Some. So we can say that organic acids smell. smell. <laughs> no, we are going to send ourselves to Google again. Do acid is smell all? Mm. Now give us another physical property. Yes. We can ask you to pour a calories. Mm. Okay, most acids are colorless. That one we can agree to some level, but some fruits look with another color. Most acids are colorless, and that would qualify for mineral acids. Some organic are not color, like fruits in, 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 in what? Uh, in lemon, yellow, yellow color. That means 
mineral acids are the ones that are carried. But there is that property that yes, some acids are corrosive. Are corrosive, yes. They are corrosive to, to mean they eat up the skin and other materials. That's very good. That's another point. Yes. Now I want you, have you ever touched an acid or lemon juice and you poured it on your hands? Not the, the lemon peel because the peel feels slippery. That, that outer section if you touch it. But if you pour tomatoes on yourself or you, are they, is it slippery or rough? rough? That means acids have a rough feel. Yeah. Yeah, now let us, uh, th those are some of the physical, what of putting it in water? Does it dissolve? To dissolve is to, f to, to mix uniformly. Acids are soluble in water. Yeah. Now, there is in the laboratory there how we can know an acid there. And that is uh, uh, their effect on indica. There is what we call indicators. That concept is now going to be introduced at this point here. Indicators. Mm. That acids change the color of indi. Because that one you can see that the indicator is turning the color by your eyes. Not so. Acids change the color of indicators. Mm. See? Those are some of the physical properties. Now, listen. We want now to look at acid and the indicator. Acids and indi indicators. Effect of acid on the indicator. Before it drop into the, because the physical property change the color of the indicator. Now we want to see color changes that acids can, or can do to indicators. Now, uh, that means we can now bring in that before the chemical properties here. Uh, effect of any acid on indicators. Now, what's an indicator? The word is from English, indicate. <laughs> Uh, what's an indicator? Anybody who has ever researched on Google? You seem to have done so. Yes. Mm. Pension, see? I think an indicator is something that shows that a substance is an acid or an alkaline. Oh? An alkaline. Oh, last year. An alkaline. That is the second one. That means any acid is a substance which can change color to show that the substance that I'm dealing with is acidic, alkaline, or new, neutral. Mm. See, that means an indicator in simple terms is a substance which changes color in acidic medium or alkaline medium or neutral medium. There are very many indicators here. Uh, which include the uh, somebody's very attentive seems litmus. to be a litmus paper. Litmus paper. This one was uh, extracted from what lichens. There are certain plants called lichens from uh, lichens. It was the first one to be to be used, the first one of its kind. Then we have others. Somebody saying, what are you having in the hands? Universal. Universal. Universal indicator. Then we have there another one called the pheno, phenolophthalene. Phenolophthalene. Then we have methyro orange. These are the common indicators in our laboratory that uh, now acids will change the color of litmus paper 
they will change the color of phenol, 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 phenolphthalene, they will change the color of methyl orange, and also affect universal indicator. Now we, we shall hold the universal indicator broadly to discuss it as we compare bases and uh, acids. Let us only look at the first three because universal indicator has some important features on it. Now, joining down now to, uh, let us have a small table there and you, you, and you do some tests there. I'm going to ask you uh, to, to, to just get uh, a le, le, lemon, lemon juice and you test it with blue lit mass paper and red lit mass paper. Then I'm going to also ask you to, to test uh, to test you can use this test tube you you squeeze some lemon juice here away from the book or you first try to punch punch the lemon eh? no try to try to punch punch it yeah then you squeeze some You try to pick some two leaves, blue litmus and red litmus paper. What happens? Yes. When I use the blue lip mask paper, it changed to red. When I use red, it remained red. Red remained red. Then I'll also request you to use methyl orange. You, you, you get some lemon juice in one test tube. Is there some lemon juice? Yeah. This one you are going to add in methyl orange. Another one, squeeze it here. You will add the you add the get a dropper yeah that's enough then in one you add methyl orange, use a dropper. Then one add phenoph phenophthalene is here. A dropper is just near your lemon, there. You squeeze through this water first. How many drops did you press? Just like three drops. Uh, show, show in the camera, you are adding phenolphthalein to lemon juice. Patients lift it up in front here, do we see? We have added phenolphthalein, anything seen? 
Any color change? No. That means phenolphthalene, there is no color change. Then methyl orange lift it to grace and we see the color through the camera. Yes, those are enough. What is the original color of methyl orange and what is the color change here? It's changing to red. To red. Yeah. And the original color of methyl orange is orange. Was orange. Then when you added lemon juice, it turned to red. See? Okay. Now let us come back here now. Uh, that means litmus paper in anus, what happens? What happens when you put litmus paper in an acid? Blue litmus paper will turn red. Blue turns to red. Red, then red? Remains red. Remains red. Then phenolphthalene indicator. What, what happened? No color change. Remain the colorless. Yeah. Remain the colorless because it's already colorless. Then methyl orange, orange turned what? Red. To red. Turned red. Turned red. Okay, that's very very great work. That means uh, uh, that means acids affect uh, acids normally affect in the indicators that's a physical pro a physical uh, property because we have seen it using a eyes okay right now let us drop now to now we are shifting to the chemical properties clear okay chemical properties we have seen various physical properties that acids are sour have a rough feel in the hands they are corrosive then they affect indica indicators the universe one is very interesting we shall see it last Now, um, chemical properties of acids. Then point two, because chemical property can also refer in terms of a chemical rea. Now, I'm going to ask you, um, we are going to, to look at a next, uh, two chemical properties here, plus the one you have stated. The one you have stated is fine. We are now going to add more two. Yes. Now we are now going to add more to now before we add more to listen. Listen attentively. Uh, acid is that the, the next property would be reaction of acid with a metal. If you pour an acid on a metal, what happens? Now that one I will ask you. A demonstration to you uh, we are going to get um, hopefully our piece of magnesium metal is around here or else zinc granules yeah now we are going to uh, I'm going to use one mineral acid called hydrochloric acid here hydrochloric acid then then this hydrochloric acid we shall pour it on a metal and see 
what does happen when an acid is poured on a metal because a chemical change or chemical reaction must involve formation of a new su substance now uh, get me a spatula spatula is here I'm, I'm requesting that uh, one student just picks like two pieces of zinc granules here and uh, adds in a little of uh, hydrochloric acid weight uh, pick, pick, pick a, a spatula yeah okay those are two okay put two this is zinc zinc metal now some names we just improve this is written on zinc granules when we use the word granules we just mean small pieces of that metal zinc granules sometimes we can call them filings like we can have iron file when you hear of iron filings we simply refer to very tiny pieces of that metal uh, that's that's why we give it some uh, simpler names filings granules like that now when we are, we are going to add some hydrochloric acid here onto a metal and we see what will happen uh, pouring some acid here on a metal uh, hopefully this is my acid now I'm pouring it on a, a metal here now we, we are observing slowly yeah that uh, that by by observation there is a uh, kind of boiling there is some kind of boiling I think you have seen yeah, you can pass it around that boiling yeah. uh, some kind of bubbles uh, you, you see that yeah now that means uh, anything to bubble from a solution means there is a gas coming uh, out there is a gas that means when a metal reacts with an acid then there must be a gas coming out the gas comes what out now remember we said that mineral acids listen I, I would want you to to guess or, or kind of guess or speak the truth which gas is this let me take you to this this is zinc metal not so we have added there the reactive part of the acid which is what what's the reactive part of the acid that chemical part of the acid hydrogen ion now which gas is being made in the process that means hydrogen gas is being made so when an acid which has hydrogen ions is poured on a metal then you are going to get a gas but remember here will remain inside there a liquid or a solution now which solution would it be the original acid see see that now acid plus metal is giving us a gas plus another substance a new substance because we say this is a chemical reaction producing new things that means you can't again have the liquid back no what we are having here is now what we call a salt now that that's a bit hard in the head to conceptualize but you let me break it down now before i speak acid plus metal gives gas hydrogen gas plus salt listen now that gas we are going to see ahead of time that it is tested using uh, uh, we test using a burning splint we get uh, uh, we, we get uh, we get uh, burning splint we mean we put actual fire we light like a matchbox or a piece of wood then bring it where hydrogen is coming out from what we shall hear is a pop sound what we shall hear is a pop 
sound. Okay, now we were saying um, that metals react with acids. Uh, we were on chemical properties of acids, metals, um, maybe enlisting them to have a clear map. Um, chemical properties of acids. We said the first one, they release hydrogen ions when it dissolved in water. Release hydrogen ions. Uh, what makes it sour? When dissolved in, in water to react with the metals to produce hydrogen, gas, and salt. Now the word salt uh, would seem a bit some, something sounding as if it is the salt that we put in the vegetables. Now listen as I explain something on the salt here. Uh, because we have a full topic called the salts. Did you not stop it, uh, topic it too? The next topic after this is a salt. I hope we can hold that. A, a salt is a substance formed when... Um, now, a, a metal will meet an acid. Let me maybe be brief on a salt. You see, an acid itself has hydrogen in it and it has a certain part. Let me call that part what? And because like hydrochloric acid, we said it has hydrogen and chlor chlorine. When you add a metal, like sodium metal, what is the, C oh, let us use magnesium, what is the symbol for magnesium? MG. MG, that was seen in senior one. What happens is that magnesium co comes and adds itself to this and this breaks away. This hydrogen will change into hydrogen gas, then this combination will be called a salt. A salt is a, a just uh, the metallic part and the, the other non-metallic part which came from the uh, the acid. See, we shall explain deeper what is a salt, that it's always formed when the metal part replaces the hydrogen of the uh, the acid. A substance formed when the hydrogen ions of an acid are replaced by a metal by a metal ion. See that? When the metal replaces, then you form a salt. But we are going to discuss salts in depth to understand them well. Now, we have said, now we said that this hydrogen gas can be tested using a burning splint. A burning splint is that flame of fire on either a matchstick or a, a, a small piece of wood. Now we are asking uh, one student to demonstrate how this hydrogen gas can be tested, then we can move on. Uh, patients test for, demonstrate to us how you do test hydrogen gas. Uh, Pension C, you are using zinc granules and you are adding them to, to, a, to, a, to a test tube. Add some more zinc granules. Add some more zinc granules first. So that we produce enough hydrogen gas.
Okay, then add the sulfuric acid or battery acid. That acid is in the battery. When you add, halfway is enough. That's enough. Now we are seeing there is vigorous bubbling and we shall see. Okay, hold it. It's not, it's not harmful. Hold it and you, you bring a burning splint on the mouth of that test tube and we see how hydrogen is tested. That uh, remove it and put it back. That means whenever we are testing for hydrogen gas, we use a burning splint and the hydrogen produces a pop sound and that is its test in the laboratory. It produces a pop pop sound. Now in short, acid plus metal gives us a, co a substance called salt plus hydrogen. Is that very very clear? Yeah. Now these reactions we are going to look at reactions later but we are saying acid plus metal is salt and hydrogen. Okay, right. Now next is a reaction with the reaction of acids with the bases that any acid reacts with the base now again there is that word a base here a base and now this we can simply uh, get, get to us that uh, we shall see because the next discussion shortly after a few minutes is a base a substance that is now bitter. But when you pour a sour substance into a bitter one, then you, what happens? Then what, what, what happens? You can transfer. You transfer it down there. Put water. Enough. Add more from the other side. Yeah. Now we're saying acid plus base that the third chemical property is reaction of an acid with a base and we are going to see very well that a base um, is bitter this time a base is bitter so that when you pour a bitter substance like wood ash ash from charcoal is bitter see that you told us red pepper is bitter when we mix a lemon and red pepper, then the test you get will be like water. See, that the effect of a base will be opposite to that of an acid. I'm speaking something deeper here, that when you get an acid and add it to a base, the base would simply make the acid uh, lose its energy. We, we, we say it has neutralized the acid. Clear? That acid plus base, the reaction is a neutralization reaction where the acid is made to test neutral. See? Now, what is actually produced here, when an acid reacts with a base, uh, now we are going to see what is a base actually that he, uh, acid plus base gets us salt plus water. Now, this might look a bit, uh, but how does it transform into water? 
Oh, now we shall see that an acid has a chemical section. It produces what? Then a base would be producing the OH ion. That, and now we are going to give a, a certain special attention in the discussion of a base down here. But we can hold it there, then we go to bases. Bases now. We are going to see what makes the base bitter is there is a certain chemical species in the base that makes it bitter. See, bases now, as we try to summarize. Base, bases. Yeah. What is a base? See, now we're saying that a base is a substance that is formed when an acid reacts with, I mean, a, a base, sorry, let us pause a bit, pause a bit, wait a bit. Uh, we have been seeing uh, behind it there that a base can react with an acid to produce a salt and water. Now, under bases, we want to see the definition and the chemical nature. Clear? Then we shall also see some examples of bases and we shall also see that bases can also be strong strength of uh, bases and this time we shall be calling them what alkalis alkalis then we shall also check um, our properties of bases both physical and chemical then lastly we shall discuss the indicator now let us look at that we, we, we categorize that first and said some substances can be sour bitter or neutral then we have seen later that a base a base is now this time bitter but not sour. Now we shall pick our definition of a, a, a base from behind there. From behind there. Now uh, definition and chemical nature of a base. Um, we shall pick the definition from the, the chemical property of an acid that a base reacts with an acid to produce what? A salt and water. But bases test with a which test? Sour. Clear? Bases are bitter, not so? Yeah, they are bitter. Now, that means we can first have the definition, then we discuss the chemical net. The definition is that a base is a substance that what? Reacts with an acid to produce um, salt and water only. And that type of reaction, what do we call it? What did we say a reaction between an acid and a base is called? Neutralize. Neutralization. Thank you very much. That means cancelling the effect of one substance over the, uh, the other. Okay, that's clear. Now listen. What is that that makes the base the way it tests. An acid had hydrogen ions while a base has what we call hydroxide ions or oxide ions. 
hydroxides OH and for them they have a minus sign on them then oxide is O with a minus sign of 2 mm. hydroxide ions or oxide ions make up a base and it's what's responsible for the sour taste and do, do, can you guess why water is produced how many elements are found in water there is okay why do you think a base will produce water You have a suggestion? Yes. yes. Because it contains uh, an oxygen atom and a hydrogen atom which are both negative to the new positive. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Could we say? I, what I mean is that hydroxide. Hydro means what an oxide is coming from oxygen. That's what I'm trying to say. Hey. But let me ask, could we say an acid is positive and a base is negative? Yes. Therefore, there will be thus neutral yes. and you taste nothing. Yeah. That's correct. That's hey, <laughs> thank you very much. Now, let us drop the examples of bases um, and um, we have uh, the com we shall list the common laboratory one that because whenever you see uh, a base must be ready with hydroxide or oxa oxide mm. me i'm asking you now a question if uh, a base is a hydroxide an oxide then if we are reading a base we just attach a metal part on it sodium hydroxide sodium oxide see that means can you give me some can you figure out some examples of bases now a metal with the other active section Yes. Sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide. Yeah. The other in terms of the other one would be sodium oxide. Then magnesium hydroxide. Exactly. And so magnesium potassium. potassium oxide. Potassium hydroxide. Okay, that means that, that that chemical species must be a hydroxide or an o oxide exactly now now listen here listen here ah uh, listen i have here calcium hydroxide there and I have also sodium hydroxide. But um, uh, yes, zinc oxide is also there. I'm going to ask us to add some water and steer it with water. We are going to, because I want now to investigate, before I drop to something else, what we mean by an alkali. See, upon giving examples of bases, you have given me sodium oxide, not so? You have said the calcium oxide, it can also have calcium hydro, hydroxide. Now, I want to see. Ah, listen. Some of these bases, when you put in water, they don't dissolve. And then what is to dissolve? To 
to agree with water. <laughs> to be patience, you believe that to, to to be uniform with water is that when you dissolve, you have agreed to be in water and to be together with water. Therefore, you are uniform. Okay. Now, see. Now, some bases when you put in water, like Chirabo, you are going to explain to us upon putting sodium hydroxide in water, did it dissolve? Then patients, we are going to talk to us upon putting calcium hydroxide in water, did it dissolve? Okay, when I need sodium hydroxide in water, the sodium hydroxide dissolved in water, and the color didn't change. And it's colorless. Yeah. Okay. And the calcium hydroxide I added in water didn't dissolve, and the water turned to white. It's it's kind of whitish. It's misty. It's misty. Now, uh, some bases. Listen, some bases will dissolve in water, whereas some will not dissolve. Some can slightly dissolve. See? Now, we, we are going to ask Chirago to demonstrate that she's going to use sodium hydroxide in water. Are you tell us what, what happens? when sodium hydroxide is put in water and the um, patients will tell us what happens when calcium hydroxide is, is, is put in water and you steer. Yes, Chirabo, tell us what happens sodium hydroxide in water and the, what happens to calcium hydroxide in water. Okay, when you mix sodium hydroxide with water, the sodium hydroxide will dissolve water and it will remain colorless. That's it will dissolve from a, a colorless solution. Yeah. Thank you. Patience. Calcium hydroxide slightly dissolved in water. Can you lift up that calcium hydroxide? It has left some solids at the bottom. Okay. Then, uh, uh, where was that solution that dissolved? Okay, that's right. Thank you. Now listen, in the argument about the alkali. Of course, an alkali, listen, an alkali is a base first of all. See? But for it, but for it, the chemical species in it is a hydroxide ion only. That means a base, a base has hydroxide and oxide, but an alkali is now a base, a basic hydroxide now, see, which is soluble in water. Now listen. Uh, if you put like magnesium hydroxide in water, it won't dissolve, but it's a hydroxide. See? Now, uh, examples of alkalis here, there are those hydroxides which are strictly soluble in water or slightly soluble like calcium hydroxide. Here we have sodium hydroxide, very soluble. Uh, we have potassium hydroxide, very soluble. See, then we have uh, um, a calcium hydroxide, which is just slightly soluble. Part of it dissolves, part does not dissolve. See, that's exactly. Now, we cannot call a copper hydroxide an alkali. Neither can we call aluminium hydroxide an alkali because it does not dissolve in water. Therefore, an alkali is a basic hydroxide which is soluble in water. 
seen seen there is the last one here called the ammonia ammonium hydroxide ammonium hydroxide which is also called the ammonia solution sometimes it's called just ammonia solution and we shall meet it ahead there that it's the solution that when we expose it here has that smell of a uh, goat's urine it smells like uh, the urine of a he goat so a he goat now strength of alkalis of course you know they will be strong and weak alkalis strong and weak alkalis from our discussion of strong acids and strong and weak acids could you figure out the the definition of a strong alkali because now we have dropped to strength of alkalis strength of alkalis we have strong and weak what's a strong alkali according to you strong alkali then weak yeah here we, we have a so-called sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide uh, calcium hydroxide then last we only have ammonia ammonia solution as the weak alkali now we can figure what's the definition of a strong alkali is the one that does what patience i think a strong alkali is a, an alkali that completely aerates water to produce salt and no to produce is the one that completely ionizes in water to produce which chemical species is found in the alkali ions you see a strong alkali is the one that completely ionizes to produce many hydroxide and because you say dana alkali is made of hydroxide only see that correct see <laughs> that's very correct then the weak will do the opposite ionizes partially to produce a few hydroxide ions see now because in the interest of time properties of bases the physical properties physical properties uh, this one is yours now i'll ask you um uh, some local bases in our community uh substances that feel that tests that test what that test beta you have some that test beta yes mention some then we shall see uh, the physical properties yes what uh, test beta chirabo ash that is the wood ash oh yes the wood ash tests beta see red pepper is bitter see yes salt salt has a funny taste which is it bitter if if salt was bitter would you eat food <laughs> when it is raw direct testing it is 
Now, what is that? It's the, the bitter taste. The salty taste. It's bitter. Or salty taste. <laughs> of course, as we shall discuss salts already there, that all salts will taste like the salt that you have at home. The salt you have at home is one of the examples of salts. See? That means we shall have salts having the same taste similar to the salt at home. See? Now, let us drill deeper there. Ah, who has ever touched purple leaves? And you tried it too. Oh, touch a little sodium hydroxide solution you have mixed there. You touch it and feel it in your hands. Since it's dilute, touch just a little, it has no harm. Just a little. You explain the feel. Patients touch it. Patients touch sodium hydroxide. Tell us, how does that alkali feel? Is it, is it smooth? Yes. It is smooth and slippery. Yeah. And you tell us now what does sodium hydroxide, what is the use of that sodium hydroxide? Now you can know where it is used to do. Making for you things that are washing. You know how you wash? Okay. Now, alkali uh, bases. Are uh, bitter, not so. Then next verses are uh, smooth. Are smooth. Have a smooth feel or slippery. Even they have a smell. Are you very, very sure? That means not all smell. Okay. Now, look look here. Uh, we have seen that they have that uh, smooth feel or slippery feel, not so. Then they are bitter. In fact, if you tested with your tongue that alkali, though not advisable. But by mistake, if you took it in the tongue, it will taste very, very bitter. Mm. Now, these are some of the physical properties. Dropping down to chemical properties of bases. Chemical properties of bases here. Uh, the, uh, the, the first chemical property, you know it. I, 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 I'm waiting for it from you. A base contains hydroxide ions only and oxide ions. The next chemical property of a base. Bases react with acids to produce salt and water only. And that reaction we called it neutral. Neutralization reaction. I think that's very, very clear. Now, that is throwing us to indicators in the closure. Uh, indicators. Now, before indicators, we needed to summarize a few comparative uh, uses of acids and um, bases before we, we close with the indicators there's of acid sand bases now we are going to where do we use acids we have so many uh, I would like you mention an acid with its use Yes, patients. Some acids like citric and ascorbic acid are used to make drugs that are used to treat diseases like cough and Thank you very much. 
uh, ascorbic acid and citric acid are used in the making drugs to treat respiratory disease diseases. Next acid, yes, Chiravo. How can speak of hydrochloric acid that is used in the stomach to kill germs? Uh, hydrochloric acid used in the stomach to kill germs and uh, prevent rotting, you know, so? Yes, patience. Sulfuric acid is used in car batteries. Yes, sulfuric acid is used in car batteries. Any other acid? Me, let me give you one also. Nitric acid is used in making explosives, dyes, fertilizers. Explosives, dyes, fertilizers. Now you can Google for as many as the examples of acids are. Yes. You can ask a funny question. Can we reduce? Can we use acids to reduce on fat? So of course, uh, of course, uh, they always tell us that uh, uh, if you want to reduce the size, drink lemons. Uh, now the you see the acids uh, break down those fats into into soluble products that can easily flow through the blood stream because fats will normally um, stick on the blood vessels you see that that means the, the acids burn out the, 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 to burn is in Uganda or culture mm, they burn out simply they react with them to form soluble substances which can easily be eliminated out of your body if it's in fatty form it will not easily go out of your body in fact it will stay in blood vessels that's why when you are fat you develop high blood pressure because those fats normally stay in the blood vessels they reduce the pumping rate of the heart because the, the blood vessels are not easily passable when you drink an acid so it reacts with the fat to break it into soluble product so now bases you can mention some one base with its example that will request you to google more to google more like red pepper are edible. Are edible, exactly. Need to flavor foods. Some of you want appetite, not so using red pepper. I wonder how appetite is broke by red pepper. It confuses your brain that you are not eating the actual food. Mm. Now, sodium hydroxide used to make soap. You have felt it slippery? And that's why people of those days washed using purple leaves. See? Because when you put purple leaves, they have a slippery feel. See? And they make some kind of leather in water. See? Making soap. See, making rayon is, is your colors that you use in art. Sodium hydroxide make, makes, makes what? Um, lions. Calcium hydroxide is called select lime. That means some words like that. That's calcium hydroxide, select lime used to, 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 to control the soil, to, to reduce acidity in the soil. That very, very fine. Because some plants don't want very acidic soils, therefore you use select lime to make it. Um, why? Because you said an acid plus a base, you will neutralize. Not so? See? Now, 
Uh, your Google more, your Google uses of potassium hydroxide, all the bases we've listed, ammonia is used to make fertilizers, ammonia. See, your Google more, not so. Now, finally, indicators. Indicators. Um, we, we said, what, what, who can define for us an indicator as a reminder? It is a substance used to test whether another substance is acidic or alkaline or neutral, not so, and must change color. That means we can say an indicator is a substance which is changes color depending on whether the solution is acidic, basic, or alkaline. Is that very, very right? Now, we said examples of indicators. What did we list? Litmus paper. paper. Now, this litmus paper can also be in, in a solution form. Sometimes they can make it as a solution. Blue litmus solution. Then you can have litmus solution or litmus paper. Now, we have uh, phenol, phenolophthalene, not so. What is the color of phenolphthalene in, in, when we have prepared it for you there? It is colorless. Phenolphthalene is um, colorless. Methyl orange, methyl orange is orange. See, then it's a, uh, it's a color. Now, I'm going to ask you, but, but before I ask you to try something here, uh, we also saw some universal indicators, not so? Then organic indicators from plants, clear? The, that those are organic indicators from plant extracts from plants from plants so and the, I will ask you to briefly talk to us how you remove you make plant materials indicators because um, on earth most uh, most plants have uh, colors their, their flowers are colored either red, see, or their fruits are colored, see. Uh, now those colored uh, flowers uh, always act as indicators. Whenever you pour acids on them, they will change color. If you have extracted the, the plant flower very well, in terms of its indicator. Now, let us have uh, a table here. Indicator, then acidic medium, then alkaline what? Medium. See, how does, how, how does then neutral How does a litmus paper behave in acid? A litmus paper blue turn is red, not so? Uh, blue turn is red, red remains red. You saw that, not so? Yes. Now, uh, if you use sodium hydroxide on litmus paper, could you do it very fast? How does sodium hydroxide behave on litmus paper? Red turns to blue. 
Then red, blue. Blue litmus remains blue, not so? Okay. Now get for me two test tubes and test with phenolphthalein and methyl orange. You add sodium hydroxide in two test tubes. One methyl orange. Give chirabo. Chirabo, you add methyl orange. Then patience. Just add some sodium hydroxide, then you drop in some methyl orange. Then uh, drop in phenolphthalein. But use a different dropper. Phenolphthalein in this one. What has the color become? Shake. Uh, show us. Uh, shall I show it very, very well there? How many drops did you put? Three. So you shake until it's uniform. You try to invert it. Those are enough, Chirabo. Mm. Now it's contaminated. Put it in a, in, in, put it here. Yeah. Shake, shake uh, very well and it mixes. Raise it, Chirabo, and they see. With phenolphthalein, what's the color? Purple. Okay. With phenolphthalein, uh, patients, what's the color? Mm, in the orange. orange. Methyl orange is orange. Are you very, very sure? Yeah. You added the more. No, re, 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 re do it afresh with two drops and you see. Just one, one drop and you see. The color is still what? Orange. Yeah. Check it well. Orange. You are very, very sure that's orange. It's yellow. It's yellow. Now, what of if you added the anacid to methyl orange? Do you remember anacid on methyl orange? Change to red. To red. Phenolphthalein has changed. Remain what? Remains colorless. Then in alkaline here, phenolphthalein is becoming purple, not so? Whereas methyl orange is turning in alkaline, yellow. Then neutral, without you adding anything. Yet no, no, no effect. What of neutral appearance of phenolphthalein is? Then the other one is orange. 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 Colorless orange. Okay. Now, that's the effect of indicators on those things. Now, uh, you can walk on the streets. You find the crooks. They deceive you. One time I was walking in Kamocha. Then a certain doctor was a, I don't claim that the doctor was deceiving, but the way he was playing psychology was too much. He got a dirty purple appearance, then he claimed that his chemical is very strong and made it colorless. How do you think the doctor made his purple solution to be colorless? Sure. Now let me give you a story. I found him teaching people that his, his drug he was going to sell was very, very, very effective. Then me, I watched him. I knew that this man is now playing with indicators to deceive the people. He had a purple heart solution. Then he said, you see how my chemical can work in your body. He poured in another chemical into the purple one and the purple one became colorless. 
Ni hao hao wa didi meki de, de papo tani kalaris. Si. Which is how to say the, the doctor add to the test tube to make it colorless. <laughs> now, what are you adding to make it colorless? I'm very, very sure. Phenophthalene is the other Wait, one. Acid. acid. <laughs> that means if you wanted the, to reverse the effect, you see that? Because phenophthalene is colorless in the acid, if you wanted it to become purple, you add alkali. If you wanted it to become colorless, you now add an A. Because an acid and the base give an opposite effect to each. See? And he was deceiving the people that he had manufactured a very, very strong substance. He just kept quiet and went my way. Now, universal indicator in closure. Uh, universal indicator. Now, the, the word universal would mean that it acts everywhere. Or it is made of many indi indicators. See? Universal indicator. See? Now, a universal indicator is this one, and uh, uh, there is always a pH chart. Um, listen, listen. A universal indicator, listen, we are explaining deeper things here. It works alongside a pH scale and see it works alongside a pH scale that means let us try to define it first now a universal indicator is a mixture of indicators that means it has more than one indicator that's why for it it must tell you listen that, that a lemon is more bitter than a tomato, not so? But which one is very acidic? You might not figure out very well, but a universal indicator can speak to you directly that this one is more acidic than the other, the other one. See, universal indicator is a mixture of indicators that shows color changes over a wide range of pH values. Hey, now there, now there is another term called pH. We met it some time back there. See, it is a mixture of indicators that shows color changes over a wide range of pH values. Now, pH scale. Uh, who, rem who remembers near one work where we emphasize the pH scale? It runs from zero to fourteen. pH scale runs from zero to fourteen. Now listen very attentively here. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Now uh, what does pH 7 represent? Neutral. Neutral. Clear? Mm -hmm. What does... Who, to be more acidic is to have which pH? From zero. Here you are very, very acidic. Eh? Yes. A strong acid. Then here you are weak. Yes. Weak acid. Okay? Now listen, we are going now to involve a universal indicator chart with the pH scale. Then we compare. Now, uh, whereas here is what? Weak. Weak alkali or weak base, not so? Yes. Uh, then here is strong uh, alkali, not so? Now, 
see now uh uh, this acid is battery acid here. The, the, uh, you can give an example. Battery acid is sulfuric acid, of course. Not so? Here you can have now stomach what? Hydrochloric acid. See? Now, at, um, that means between here you can have the stomach acid. Then uh, three you can have the, uh, the what? Uh, uh, the, 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 the lemon, the juice, see, lemon there, yeah, you can have your tomatoes, clear, mm. then at five, what do you have at five there, you can try some substance at five and six, six. Yeah. Uh, milk, yeah, Milk, that's very, very great. Here you can have coffee tea. Coffee, coffee. See, uh, what do you have here? Red pepper would be there. Are you very, 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 very sure? That means you can pick various substances around there. Um, this this one you can have drain a clean, a drain cleaner that vim vim not so vim then here you can have jig not so jig see hair remover shampoo huh? hair remover is what. <laughs> what is the pH of that? You put on here and you can scrap it off without energy. What is that? I'm asking which pH is it? Because it's among the hey, That means now that is research now. Now you are going to Google. How will you find some of these? You, you will Google uh, universal indicator pH. Universal indicator and pH scale on Google, you'll find many substances given to you as examples. Now, the universal indicator has colors. See, it has colors. Like here, the chart on Google, you'll find that chart, it shows green. Of course, there is a, a chart here. Uh, and this way, for strong acids here, you have what? red but red covers up to here then next you have uh, three you have um you have red pink pink is light red then you have brown yellow yeah uh, this green this green here it's, somewhere it is faint here it's deep the green is just the intensity difference. The, the one is deep. See, now this way you have violet at 14. Uh, Google has that chart very clear with its colors. That means don't worry where you get it from. Yeah, indigo. All these, uh, from here it looks blue. It looks blue, but that blue is all through, because the blue's intense value is one looks, where, where you have now, violet has some blue, indigo has some blue, you see? That means you have uh, um, indigo, indigo, then you have uh, blue, blue that runs here, yeah. That, that, that means, now listen, what do we mean? That if I got this universal indicator, let me ask, we are going to get a drop of this and put in, in, in that uh, battery acid. Then you observe. That when you put a drop of universal indicator in battery acid, you will see what? You will see red. 
That means it can tell us the actual strength of the acid. A universal indicator is very advantageous that it tells us the actual strength of the acid. Yeah, it places that this one is more stronger. Like ash, ash would be this way. It can, if you add it to any ash, you will know that ash is very alkaline or less aluka, alkaline. That's the action of the universal indicator. Get uh, um, some test tube, you put in a little. Then he, uh, this indicator, we are going to pick it. Um, yeah. Could you, um, could you pour out one? Yeah. Yeah, you use it. You use it. We don't want to contaminate. Yeah. Then you, you, you drop, you drop in into the, into the, just like two. Is that a dropper? Uh, was it clean? Dropper, you can squeeze it in water to clean it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can point it, you see that it's red. Uh, now if you put it in water, if you use the water and you drop tin in the indicator, it would again show another color, green, not so? Uh, the universal keeps changing color depending on the strength. Okay. Now, yeah, there we are. Uh, we have reached the end of our lesson. And uh, I would like to appreciate you for being very attentive and a good class. Now, uh, in summary, before I give you the activity of integration, we, we went through a very long session of acids, bases, and indicators. Now we started with acids. We looked at organic acids around us from plants. We saw mineral acids from mineral compounds or inorganic compounds. We looked at the strength of the acid, the basis of the acid, the chemical unit of the acid, which is a hydrogen ion. See, we saw that acids were sour. We looked at behavior of the acids under indicators. And um, we jumped on to bases. We said bases are the opposite behavior of an acid. That means if a, uh, like a snake is poison, is acidic. That means when you are bitten by a snake, you simply bring a neutral substance like sodium hydroxide or pick ash, see, and smear where the snake has bitten you. Even they encourage you to drink charcoal because charcoal is neutral. Uh, forms a neutral solution that can try to, I mean charcoal is a bit, some bit of alkaline, it can try to neutralize some poison. Yeah, don't drink sodium hydroxide, no. At least you go and eat ready pepper. Eat something that is alkaline if you have been bitten by, like a bee, a bee's poison. You just go, uh, because the, the, the poison of a bee when it bites you is, it has a pH of 3.5, a bee. Therefore, it will be advised when a bee beats you, you go and uh, look for what? A neutral pH. You can look for something like uh, soap. Yeah, soap has a pH which is neutral. Soap is neutral. It means when you put litmus paper in soap, the paper will turn from red to blue. See, that means when a bee bites, you wash there with the soap very many times. See that? A wasp 
a wasp has a, 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 an alkaline uh, poison. Therefore, when a wasp beats you, you can research on those dangerous animals, a, a scorpion, when it bites you, what is the pH of its poison? It will help you that when maybe a wasp bites me, bring a lemon, see, as the first aid, see. Now, we looked at that, we went to bases having a soapy field, substance of the soapy field, purple leaves, see, purple leaves. Now we went ahead and now we are on the uh, last part, universal indicator, and we've compared the pH scale with the universal indicator. Thank you very much. Receive this activity of integration. Research about snakes. Uh, uh, the, uh, is that venom acidic, alkaline? Research about bees. See, because you need to give first aid. See, don't be deceived by quaker people. See, now write this activity of integration. You have, uh, you have learned about acids and bases. You have learned about acids and bases. And would wish, and would wish to create awareness about and would wish to create awareness about how the concept affects farming would wish to create awareness about how the concept affects farming uh, write a letter to your farmer to your farmer friend Write a letter to your farmer friend in the countryside. In the countryside. Uh, advising him on the importance. Advising him on the importance of testing soil pH. Of testing soil pH for good crop yields and how to do it for good crop yields and how to do it so yeah thank you very much we meet in the next topic of salts